Thank you uh, very much for the invitation uh, and uh, for the first speech, which was uh, very interesting and uh, and inspiring. And in fact, we live in a very, very complex world and very tricky world. I just uh, looked at the back side of this uh, translation machine and you read Danish design and quality made in China. Uh, this is very sophisticated. Uh, so, uh, I am a uh, European director of this research network, which uh, is a five years old collaboration between scholars around the world and very successful scholarly, not so much financially, but uh, we have many ac uh, activities and publications, and I'm very happy with this invitation because it was a very important uh, uh, intention of our network that we can reach out from the scholarship and from the academia towards policy makers to share the insights of uh, our really high quality uh, work. Not of my work, but the work of the colleagues in the network from India to the States or, or, or from Aust Australia to, 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 to Britain. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I will be the scandalizer of this day because personally I would say I am a kind of conservative anarchist or uh, I would say if it sounds more friendly a kind of Christian socialist and uh, personally I am a bit critic of secularism or certain kind of ideas of secularism and uh, but I hope that my speech will be useful for for you so I, I try to be as short as possible some months ago a Hungarian rabbi became the subject of police uh, investigation because he publicized the findings of the results of a private inquiry which found out that the mother of one of the leaders of this community was Catholic. Therefore, according to the Jewish law, this person cannot be regarded as a Jew. This rabbi may face charges of violating rights, of privacy, rights to privacy. In Germany, a couple belonging to the Christian Baptist Church was jailed because they withdrew their children from the mandatory sexual education classes in school. According to a recent report, four Muslim players of the Newcastle United football uh, group refused to wear the new kit of the team as the new sponsor is a loan company and they prefer to follow the Muslim principle which prohibits loaning or borrowing money and especially forbids gaining interest. These cases are among the minor issues, even though they are not at all insignificant, among those, clearly among those that clearly indicate that attitudes following from the teachings of religious traditions can be in conflict with the attitudes or the rules of the secularly framed environment of contemporary Western societies. We all know about the headscarf uh, debates in France or Belgium, about the disputes over the adoption of costumes and legal codes of very various religious traditions, especially but not exclusively elements of the Sharia law in the West, or about the minaret controversy in Switzerland, where interestingly enough the French-speaking cantons opposed the banning initiative. Similarly, issues like the German uh, circumcision debate uh, recently or the court decision on the Italian classroom crucifix case are well known. On the other hand, the trial of the pan group Passi Riot merited great attention internationally and generated serious concerns about the situation in Putin's Russia. A concern about the rising extremism or fundamentalism is a global phenomenon. Here we can think of the Hindu communalism in India, Islamic fundamentalism, but also various kinds of Christian uh, forms of it, either far right groups in the US or related groups in Europe. And do not forget that Breivik's rather confused visions on a crusade he had to fight. And also we can think of Jewish movements of this kind. 
We also know about Tony Blair's religious motivation in supporting the invasion of Iraq, as well as how important the issue of the religious affiliation of Mitt Romney turned out to be during the presidential campaign, at least in the beginning. Two facts are evidently shown by these numerous particular cases. Liberal democracies are by no means able to unproblematically handle situations arising from the presence of religious persons and groups within these societies. The presence of, religious, of religions is manifest within these societies and can become central issues without the public debate as well as instigate political consequences. Considering these two points, we can refer to a more general trend within modern societies, which can be best described by introducing the concept of the eminent sociologist of religion, Jose Casanova. In his seminal work from 1994, Casanova wrote about a complex process of deprivatization, contesting the so far dominant conviction that in modern societies, religions are privatized in the and the public domain is a kind of naked terrain, he convincingly argued that modernization and this privatization are by no means twin developments. Since the, 19, since the 1990s, the deprivatization process become more evident and those developments are in a massive way reflected in both the public <coughs> discourse and the scholarly debates. This paper intends to shed light on the most important elements of the recently emerged discussions on the nature and the consequences of these new conditions in Europe. Evidently, this overview cannot go into the details of the various approaches, both interpretative and critical, of these discussions. My aim is merely to examine some central issues concerning this phenomenon and to conclude with some propositions regarding possible, regarding possible socio-political consequences of this emerging scenario. Since during the last two decades, the political discourse within the Western societies, as well as on the global, global scale, went under a remarkable modification, we need to consider the appropriate modes of addressing this emerging scenario. It is an essential assumption of this paper that contemporary European liberal democracies encounter an essential dilemma that follows from the emergence of the condition uh, that, uh, that later this paper will characterize as the post-secular situation. The reason why this dilemma is so essential, especially for European societies, is that although in different ways, a kind of secularist principle fundamentally determines the political identity of these societies. By this I mean that historically and ideologically alike, these societies embrace what a recent study de depicted as the liberal consensus. In more detailed the, in more detail, it means that according to a principal, principal conviction within these societies, constitutional democracies, especially under the kinds of wide moral and religious pluralism evident in modern societies, are made more legitimate, stable and free when religion is largely excluded from, their, uh, from and reshaped to be made more compatible with a just political order. This is, would be the liberal consensus. In other words, the majority of liberals take it for granted that liberal democracies have a secular core. The new situation challenges this taken for granted principle. That is why it goes to the heart of the self-understanding of these democracies. Various authors realized this essential di dilemma and came forward with the restatement of the secularist principle. This paper takes a different direction and will proceed in the following main steps. First, I will go on, I will give an overview <coughs> of the main components of the contemporary European religious, culture, cultural, and socio political situation. 
As the second element, I will shortly go through the main components of Jürgen Habermas's post-secular thesis, that is, at least in Europe, a main referential point in the respective debates. That will be followed by, a, by the overview of some recent texts of another seminar scholar, Charles Taylor, who on many occasions engaged with Habermas. In conclusion, I would like to reflect on some questions related to the concrete forms of policy making. The main elements of the European uh, situation. In my view, the main characteristics of the contemporary European situation can be summarized in the following four components. All are very complex and worthy of detailed study on their own right. Evidently, speaking of Europe, we should think not only of the conditions within the European Union, However, because of the dominant position of the EU within the European political perception, this is an especially important factor. At the same time, we need to underline that, <coughs> the, inter that the internal variab variability of, this of the various sub contexts inside Europe is significant. I mean that France is different from Britain and so on. The French uh, laicity is very much different from the, from the British perception. of for instance. Uh, here I would only summarize the m four main uh, characteristics of the European situation. First of all, uh, uh, during the last uh, decades, some uh, uh, r traditional religious communities in Western Europe and leaders of these communities gave voice to a much more intensive, uh, to, of the demand of a much more intensive presence in the public debates. We can think of uh, uh, Ratzinger, Pope Benedict, or uh, Rowan Williams in Britain, or, or Jonathan Sachs, the leader of the, of the British uh, Jewish community. And also, uh, when we speak of uh, Europe, of course, we have to think of the Islam as well, because uh, on the Balkans there are uh, uh, Muslim communities from uh, very uh, historic times, I mean that Islam is not a newcomer in Europe in a way. And this is very important to see and I think it is neglected by the Western uh, interpreters many times. Uh, the second very important factor in Europe is immigration and the result uh, of, uh, uh, of this immigration which, which is a vibrant pluralist uh, uh, condition with Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs and so on. Uh, by the side of Christians and Jews and, and of course, atheists and uh, many kinds of uh, um, uh, religious um, uh, groups. Uh, the third uh, factor uh, is an, the problem of an enlargement or the consequence of enlargement uh, because the, uh, ex uh, the, 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 the entrance of, of Bulgaria or Romania, for instance, made Orthodox Christianity a more, uh, more uh, essential part of the European uh, religious, political or cultural political conditions, for instance. And of course, in Bulgaria, we have a quite uh, remarkable Muslim community. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, there are numerous new religious movements within Europe, many kinds of new religious movements. And uh, these uh, religious movements also contribute to a uh, very pluralistic and diverse <coughs> landscape, uh, which we can also call post-Christian. So let's uh, say how uh, these two uh, thinkers uh, approach the new conditions. Although Habermas's exclusively secularist stance underwent certain modifications during the mid-1980s uh, and 1990s, <coughs> the post-secular turn of the early uh, 2000s in his works ref referred to a more uh, significant shift in his approach. He not merely acknowledges the presence of religion in late modern or postmodern societies, but proposes a more inclusive stance, especially regarding the political aspects of the problem. During the last years, he kept working further on his theory and introduced certain precision modifications. <coughs> Here I will mention only the most important elements of this thesis. 
The first element of this thesis comprises in a form of restatement of Casanova's uh, theory concerning the, pri the privatization. <coughs> Sorry. Habermas writes that despite, despite the once dominant conviction about the general decline of religion as the direct consequence of the advancement of modernization, world religions to this very day shape the physiognomy of all ma major civilization together with the embracement of modernizing tendencies within these societies. <coughs> this means, says Habermas, together with other theoreticians, I have water, uh, so, <coughs> but it doesn't help. <laughs> This means, to, uh, says Habermas, together with other theoreticians, that modernity is not a sing single modeled phenomenon, but has many variants. The persistence of the influence of religions is one aspect of this variability of modernity. In addition to this, he declares that we can hardly fail to notice that religious traditions and communities of faith have gained a new and unexpected political importance. That is to say, this component of his, di of his diagnosis focuses on the distinction between the questions concerning modernization and the so far dominating conviction regarding the um, ambiguous influence of secularization. Modernity, modernization, are issues that do not necessarily go together or should be attached to the seculariz to secularization of these societies that embrace a modernist agenda. The further exploration of his post-secular thesis concerns the political consequences of this theory and includes those arguments in which he defends the idea of the reintegration of religion into the political life of Western societies. This is a very considerable shift in Habermas's work and implies the inclusion of religiously motivated arguments in the political discourse of liberal democracies. Two main factors play a role in this component. On the one hand, he thinks that the different, different religious traditions can positively contribute to uh, strengthening the general social cohesion and can play a role as source of social solidarity within these particular societies. <coughs> On the other hand, he argues that the proper recognition of the specific identities of the religious citizens necessitates that they can contribute to the general public discourse on their own, term, own terms. It is unfair to these citizens and easily results in a kind of democratic deficit within the larger political culture of a society if these citizens are not allowed to give their voice in accordance with their specific identities and convictions. This is the general framework of the post-secular thesis. Together with certain modifications, <coughs> the essence of this post-secular thesis remains the same for our very days. So it's kind of a decade uh, he works on it. For the present purposes, I find it more interesting that in a recent, recent explication of the thesis, he introduces the concept of post-secular consciousness, referring to a change of attitude within these societies concerning the persisting presence of religions on the one hand and the reappearance in the public space on the other hand. I find this conceptual innovation important because it can dissociate the problem of the post-secular from the often very controversial and to my mind not really productive sociological statistical approach to the question. In general, Habermas states that tendencies of secularization are still detectable in Western societies, but an ideologically fueled position of secularism should be abandoned, and the emergence of the post-secular consciousness is part of this process. In other words, Habermas's position, 
ha sorry, Habermas's position proposes an inclusive stance with regard to the specific positions of the religious citizens, especially when they can contribute to the advancement of the general democratic program of these societies. However, he argues that while in the wider context of the public discourse, <coughs> citizens can use religious terminology and arguments, approaching the level of parliamentary debates and leg legislation, these arguments should be translated into a universally accessible rational language. This is called rational translation proviso by the scholarship. In other words, he sets certain limits to the inclusive stance regarding the political entrance of religiously generated arguments. He also says that the post-secular situation by no means can imply any form of rethinking of the general project of the Enlightenment modernity, as well as underlies the superiority of the agenda of human rights and Western political tradition in general. As we will see, Taylor takes a more radical position. Charles Taylor is also a living classic of contemporary philosophy and ethics. <coughs> His work like this, a secular, is, a, a secular Age, is a seminal work in uh, the history of ideas. Taylor has been an inventor of the redefinition or rethinking of secularism in various works. He admits that some form of secularism is necessary as a guarantor of democratic political structures. However, he is also a critic of the embraced conception of secularism, and recently, recently he proposed a radical program regarding the reformulation <coughs> of this paradigm. In a public lecture held in Frankfurt, he spoke about the meaning of the post-secular particularly, and declared <coughs> that the problematization of the secular and the or, uh, secularism and the exploration of the post-secular conditions by no means implying that we, we return to the pre-modern conditions. His program relates rather to the reconfiguration of the late modern or post-modern conditions in harmony with the situation we encounter today. This is a condition of uh, a radically diverse religious, cult religious cultural and social reality in which a great variety of non-religious and hybrid worldviews exist together with the enduring presence of various religious traditions. As Taylor says, uh, contemporary democracies, as they progressively diversify, will have to undergo redefinitions of their historical identities, which may be far-reaching and painful. So he proposes that uh, beyond the inclusion, uh, Western democracies and liber uh, liberal democracies has to reflect on themselves and try, uh, should redefine their own historical uh, identities, which would result, in my mind, in the redefinition of the identity itself. And this passage evinces that Taylor's initiative is more radical than the Habermasian proposal. <coughs> I try to make it more sh uh, shorter. Uh, Referring back to Habermas's terminology, we can say that for Taylor, the emergence of the post-secular consciousness implies a more essential shift in the general self-understanding <coughs> of Western societies than the simple realization of the radically polarizing situation. <coughs> in fact, as a precondition of this shift, Taylor proposes that Western societies surpass the limits of an attitude that he depicts as a general, uh, generally embraced post-enlightenment fixation of religion, as he called so it. <coughs> uh, the main uh, elements of this fixation or the, uh, the, the liberal secularist position are, the uh, are as follows. Lib uh, secularist thinks that, and, uh, that it is based on taker from granted conviction regarding a moral supremacy of the secularist outlook to God, together with an epistemic one that gives an exclusive role to enlightenment rationality. This is the first characteristics of this fixated position according to Taylor. Based on this principle, this attitude is bound to a conviction regarding the necessity of some kind of strong institutional arrangement along the lines of the secular religious distinction. Taylor characterizes the institutional model 
that the fixate, fixated position is attached to by a reference to the mantra type formulae like the separation of the church and the state or the phrases about the necessity of removing religion from the public space. These are quotations. The third point is a derivative of the second. This is concerning an fallacious idea concerning what I would ironically call the everlasting secularist formula. According to the fixated secularist position, says Taylor, if the whole matter is defined by one institutional formula, then, what, then one must just determine which arrangements of things best meet this formula, and there is no need to think it further. To say, that is to say, according to the secularist fixated position, the formula, the institutional formula, is given as an unchangeable criterion and the emerging social, social culture, cultural reality should be adapted to the formula itself and not vice versa. <clears throat> Taylor thinks otherwise. In his, in his view, this process is much more complicated. In his mind, the development of the new model needs to consider the significance of the various forms of identities, the var variability of the attitudes and worldviews. Similarly, the state should not simply be neutral according to the logic of the state-church separation, but it has to take a distance from all the various religious and non-religious positions. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, I try to summarize. Uh, Taylor uh, is a critic of modernity and a critic of uh, secularism, as we can see. But, uh, of course, he is not against uh, a form of modernity. He takes uh, the, the, so to say, rep Republican trinity of liberty, equality, and fraternity as a, a kind of possible basis of, of the new uh, model he proposes. He doesn't work it out, he pro it's a proposal. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, on the basis of this liberty, equality, and fraternity uh, trinity, uh, he proposes that the problems arising from the post-secular situation should be discussed as problems concerning diversity instead of a question related to the secular religious distinction. The proposal he suggests to work out can be summarized by this statement according to which one should start from the goals and derive the concrete arrangement from these. These goals at the same time are evidently a wide range accommodation of the various individuals and groups that make up the radically diverse religious cultural context of contemporary Western societies. Evidently, the principal democratic values and basic laws should be defended, but as a general principle, Taylor declares that religious groups must be seen as much as interlocutors and as little as menace as the situation allows. Evidently, threats to democracy, uh, threats to democratic order can come from uh, the direction of religious groups. But the lesson of the 20th century, as a theologian uh, Wolf uh, emphasized, uh, can be learned. Most violence perpetrated in the 20th century <clears throat> the most violent century of history was done in the name of secular causes. I would not uh, conclude with the proposals uh, for policy making maybe during the discussion and kind of story for uh, my for my talking and all these difficulties. I I hope that I left my flu in Belgium, but <laughs> this is not the case. <clears throat> okay, thank you so much.